bandsaw is my go-to tool for cutting curves and circles. When I wanted to make some wood straw for a manger scene recently for Christmas decorations, I realized that the bandsaw is the perfect tool for making wood straw too. To make wood straw like this on a bandsaw, I begin with a block of pine. This is some yellow pine. It's fairly dense, kind of pitchy, and the strength and the pitch in the wood give the pine straw some flexibility so it doesn't crumble into sawdust. I got the best results from a block about five inches tall. Any taller, it was difficult to handle. Any shorter, the straw didn't come out very long. I start by squaring up the sides and the edges of the block so that it's easy to maneuver on the bandsaw. I'm using a coarse ripping blade on the bandsaw. These are heavy teeth, spaced apart, and they have quite a bit of set to them. And the blade is stiff so it doesn't flex very much. As always, I lower the squeaky bandsaw guide down until it's close to the height of the block. I got the best results by removing the table insert so that the shavings could exit under the table without breaking into smaller pieces. The process that I found worked quite well is with the bandsaw running to firmly grasp this block of wood back out of the way of the bandsaw and then rake it backwards across the teeth and that gives it a shredding cutting motion across the end of the block that creates the long thin strands of wood straw. I hope it goes without saying that if you attempt to use this method to make wood straw that you're thoroughly familiar with all the safety precautions of a bandsaw and are comfortable working around the machine that can cut your finger off a lot easier than it can cut strands of wood straw. Depending on the type of wood you're using and the type of bandsaw blade will give different results in the consistency of the wood straw. Some of it comes out finer and dustier, some of it comes out longer and thicker. What I find is how the blade interacts with the grain of the wood will change the consistency of the shavings. By varying the arc that I move the wood past the blade and the orientation of the block to the blade and the angle of the arc to the blade, I was able to find a sweet spot to get a consistent yield of shavings. As you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot of wood to generate a whole lot of shavings. Like with any shop project, remember to work safely, pay attention to what you're doing. If you're not comfortable with this method, then by all means, don't do it. But if you are, it's a fast and easy way to get a pile of consistent wood straw for hobby crafts or decorating that Christmas manger scene.